right, let's talk about uh, what tools you're going to need uh, in order to modify this Fat Max. Uh, first, you're going to need a Fat Max, and uh, we show you where to get that and uh, how much it is and all that stuff. Um, I would recommend some type of overgarment. Uh, here I have a cheap uh, 511 uh, jumpsuit. You can pick these things up for cheap now. Uh, you're going to need a vise to hold your uh, Fat Max while you're doing your cutting and your grinding. You're going to need an uh, angle grinder. Uh, here I have a Sears Craftsman. Uh, you can pick these up for pretty cheap if you don't already have one. Um, you're going to need two discs. One is a metal grinding disc, which is your thicker type of disc. Uh, the second one is going to be an actual uh, bedding cutoff blade. And this is your, your thinner one. This is what you'll make your cuts with. Uh, you're going to need some uh, protection for your hands, uh, some eye protection at the very least. And then I use an actual face shield uh, to keep all the debris from shooting down into your collar and all that kind of good stuff. So uh, just the basic tools you'll need. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to cut this guy with a hacksaw or anything like that. Uh, some people had posted that that's what they used, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would just go with a uh, angle grinder, uh, go out and buy one if you don't already have one or borrow someone's, something like that. All right, so that's it, just your basic tools. And uh, next we'll get into the uh, modification. All right, basically, uh, next you want to mark off uh, where you want to make your cuts. Uh, and I did that simply using a, uh, a straight edge, any type of straight edge and a marker. That's about the uh, where you want it cut. As you can see on here, you're just basically cutting that, that claw off. And then on the, uh, the grinding part, you don't really need to mark that down. Uh, but you can. You're basically just grinding off the uh, the teeth there, and that's kind of something you'll just have to to keep an eye on and, and go with. Uh, you're gonna want to get it, uh, for lack of a better term, sharpened down a little bit. That's uh, gonna get your uh, the tool in between the uh, door frame and the door itself when you set it. All right, so we have our uh, Fat Max in the vise here. Uh, you want to make sure, of course, that you've got your vise nice and tight. Uh, have it uh, as parallel to the, uh, the floor as you can. That'll help you with making a straight cut. And we've got our uh, cutting disc on there now. And uh, let's get into it. All right, so you want to take your time with it. Uh, obviously, you're not in a big rush. Uh, you want to let the tool do the work for you. As you saw, I was uh, switching back and forth there. And uh, I'm gonna let it cool down just a little bit. Uh, if you get some drag on it, as you see, I went back and forth switching sides. Um, if you're not used to cutting metal and stuff. And we're gonna let it cool down a little bit, let the blade cool down, because this is an older disc. I've used this a bunch of times, so it's it's a little hammered, but we'll let it cool down a little bit and we'll uh, get the rest off. It's just about there. All right, we're back. Uh, I found another disc, so I changed the discs out and uh, we'll finish this sucker up. And there we 
have it. We've got that guy cut off of there. Um, <clears throat> as you can see, like I was talking about before, going back and forth when you make your cut, uh, that's why you want to make sure that you have some kind of uh, overgarment uh, and face shield. Because um, as you saw at one point, the, uh, the blade got caught a little bit and wanted to come towards me. That's when you want to switch around and uh, you know let the tool do the work for you. And if it's going to bind, make the thing shoot away from you. So anyway, remember, this is all at your own risk. Uh, but next, let's uh, get into uh, the grinding. We'll, we'll finish this guy off and we'll start knocking the teeth out. All right, so now we have our uh, thicker grinding disc on here, and uh, probably probably need a new one of these too. Uh, but anyway, we're gonna get in here and uh, smooth this guy out, and uh, then we'll set it up for grinding the teeth off. That's about it. Uh, let's see. The uh, the cut on this one isn't as uh, as straight as I did on the other one, but we're not too concerned about that. As you can see, it's a little a little off, but that, that's no big deal. Uh, we could continue to grind down these high spots here, uh, but you know it really doesn't matter. Uh, so let's get set up, and we'll start knocking these teeth off. All right, now we're set to uh, start knocking these teeth down. Um, however you can get the uh, tool into the vise, uh, it doesn't really matter. We're a little bit of an angle here, but that's no big deal. Um, if you're, you gotta be aware of where your sparks and stuff are going. So, uh, you know, I'd close my door over here to the garage so we don't set the house on fire. And uh, let's get to it. Alright, so you know you're, you're starting to get close uh, when you start knocking down the bridges or whatever. Um, and uh, once you get past that, we'll, then we'll just keep, keep going with it. So basically, uh, we knock down the bridges or whatever you want to call it. Uh, next, you just go in there, and this is where you have to pay attention to uh, to the depth that you have there. Um, like I said, my disc is pretty much toast, um, but like uh, most people, you just go with what you got. So I may uh, end up getting a new disc just to grind this thing down. You want to watch your heat and make sure you're not you know, putting excessive heat into this thing. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna check, see if I have another disc, and then we'll uh, get back to it. All right, so we're back. Uh, I didn't have another disc, and I don't feel like going to the hardware store to get one, so we'll just deal with what we got. I let it uh, cool down a little bit, so we'll get back to it. So let's pull this guy out and take a look at that. 
yeah. Not looking too bad. Uh, you can keep going with it. Uh, that's still pretty thick. Uh, so I'll keep grinding on it. But for the sake of uh, boring everyone, uh, we'll come back when I'm done. All right, so that's basically uh, basically what you're looking to do. Uh, let's see, this guy here is probably probably about the same. I could have ground that one down a little bit too. So anyway, we'll come back and uh, with the finished product. All right, so here we have it. Uh, it's ground down uh, pretty good. Um, enough to get yourself into a uh, between the door and the door frame. Um, I also kind of cleaned up the top piece here as it was a little bit uneven from the initial cut and you just uh, grind that guy down just so it's smooth. Um, and that's about it. We'll get into the uh, painting and all that stuff coming up. Alright, next we have a uh, sanding disc. We're just going to not rough up the paint a little bit uh, just so it'll take some uh, take the paint better and uh, go from there. That's about all you need to do, just rough it up a little bit, give your, uh, your paint a little bit of bite, eh, you know, it's a tool so it doesn't really matter. As far as your uh, finish goes, because once you start knocking stuff around, uh, you're going to jack it all up anyway. So anyway, uh, we'll get into paint. Alright, so we're uh, getting ready to paint this guy. Uh, basically some blue painters tape uh, to mask up your handle and uh, whatever whatever type of paint you want. I have some uh, Krylon, their camouflage stuff, the stuff is, works really well. And then I have some uh, Gillespie actual 383 paint uh, which I have left over for, from some other uh, projects. This is actual 383, the correct paint code for your military OD green. Um, but hey, you can paint it black, whatever, it don't matter, or you can leave it yellow, whatever you want to do. So, let's get into that. We're not uh, painting a hot rod or anything, so my mask and I'm not getting too uh, technical with it. Just want to keep the paint off of the rubber, because uh, it's going to have a hard time sticking to the rubber and it'll get all nasty on you down the road. That's it. All right, we're back. We're gonna start painting this bad boy. Uh, basically, you can set it up any way you want, and uh, we'll get into it. It's starting to rain a little bit, um, so we may have to stop partially the partial way through here. But like I said, since we're not painting a hot rod, uh, it really doesn't matter. All right, we're back. Uh, the rain has stopped, and uh, we'll get to uh, finishing up the paint on here. I apologize for the uh, background noise. There's a commercial air conditioning next door, and it's uh, kicking it up pretty good today, so let's get to it. So what we're just doing here is getting a good base coat on it, depending on uh, the type of spray paint you have, depends on how thick you can go and all that good stuff. All right. We'll uh, clean our nozzle off here. Just uh, making sure we're good for the next time. Always want to make sure you do that. And uh, we'll let it dry a little bit and then we'll hit it with a couple coats of uh, the uh, Krylon Tan. 
All right, so while we're waiting for this to dry, uh, I'm just gonna go over uh, kind of the pattern that we're gonna shoot on, on this guy here. Uh, call it what you want, snake skin pattern or whatever. Basically, it's just a, uh, a laundry bag that I bought at Walmart. Uh, cut a piece out of it, and then you basically just lay it over, over the uh, item that you're painting, and you dust it, dust it on there, and it gives you a uh, pretty cool pattern like this. But like I said earlier, you can paint these guys up uh, any way you want, but this is kind of the look that uh, we'll be going for. So when this dries, we'll hit it up. All right, so we're back, and uh, we're just gonna hit this thing up. Basically, I have a, a bag from Walmart, like I said, a laundry bag, cheapo. You just cut a piece out of it and uh, take your different type of paint, and we'll be laying it over and just uh, dusting it up. get as uh, precise or imprecise as you want. I like laying it at different angles. It gives it different different patterns. Uh, close, far away. It's up to you how you want to do this. And then basically, once you have that done, just hit it up with some more green, a light dust. Kind of blends it in all together. All right, we're back, and uh, the paint is dry, so let's uh, check out our handiwork here. Uh, basically, uh, this is the pattern uh, that I shot on here kind of gives you an idea of what that looks like uh, you know like I said you can paint it any way you want uh, this is just uh, the way I decided to do it uh, it shows you uh, the uh, thickness of uh, of the tool that we ground it down to uh, it gives you an idea of kind of where you're trying to go with it um, like I said I ground ground this area down a little bit smoothed it out uh, you can see how that looks uh, once that's all done. Didn't do any modifications to the backside. Don't really need to do any. Um, nice thing about this, you could put a lanyard through here or something like that. Um, while we're talking about that, uh, quick shout out to uh, Jason at GMC Custom Holsters. Uh, he's going to do up a uh, Molly uh, system so I can carry this on the back of my tack vest. So, uh, I'll do a, a video on that once he's done. Uh, it's going to be in Kydex and it'll adjust to uh, any Molly actually. So hopefully uh, we'll get that here pretty quick and I'll, uh, I'll add on to either this video or uh, we'll just do a whole nother, uh, whole nother video for the Kydex. So anyway, this has been Eric with uh, ITS Tactical. Thanks for watching.